follow my channel for the past year, you'll know I'm obsessed with visual magic. And this trick is just like the rest, except it uses no gimmicks whatsoever and you can just use a regular deck of cards. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and let's learn how to perform something I call heist. If you would like to win this exact deck of cards that I use in my video, the very same deck in my hands right now, then all you need to do is help me out just a little bit. I am trying my best as a personal goal to get to 100,000 subscribers. I'm over the halfway mark. So if you'd like to win this deck, hit that subscribe button and find a way to get other people to subscribe. The person who gets me the most subscribers will win this exact deck sent to you for free anywhere you are in the world. This is the beginner method. I begin by setting up with three cards. The first being a face up two of diamonds. Directly on top of that, I'll take an Ace of Diamonds and place it face down. And then I can have this Three of Diamonds essentially anywhere. But I like to place it on top because I can force this three or I can just directly turn it over. However you want to bring this into play is up to you. But the main thing is you show the three as a single entity. All right. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to get a pinky break underneath one card. If you can't do a pinky count, then you can turn the deck towards yourself push over the top card and bring it back maintaining a break i can display this card as one place it on top of my pinky break card and now i have a double and now i'm going to use a marlow move to get this back sort of pinky break area to move to the front and the way this works is to push down in this corner and it'll cause the front end of the deck to want to pop up okay now you just make sure that you keep a grip of the rest of the cards, otherwise it'll just spring up loose. Okay, so I use the heel of my thumb, and the flesh of my thumb and my thumb itself to keep the rest of the card flat. But essentially by placing some pressure on this corner, the front will pop up just a little bit on these two cards. And then I can use the pad of my index finger and the side of my middle finger to keep this card square as I re-grip my thumb in the corner. And essentially now I can pick up this double as one and it won't split, or it's harder to split. So I do the move, I get into position, and now I'm gonna essentially move my hand for a high five, but I keep my fingers in position. So I do that like this. The key to making this work though, to making the optical illusion work, is that you don't wanna hide that too, otherwise it does look like you're just turning over the top card. Because you wanna sort of explode like fireworks into their vision at a completely different site. So I do this, and I, I move my hand to the side and I show that too really openly. I don't hold it back, I put it into position. So at the same time, I turn over this top card like a high five and I make sure they get a good view of the two. That then sort of causes their vision to sort of distort and they can't track exactly what's happening. You just get this burst of two cards. So now it looks like I've stolen the ace pip from the two or the three in fact now because the card is squared you can see these fingers are doing that work on the corner i can place it back down on top of the deck with my and i can hold it with my thumb i keep it off to the side and as i do i can just re-square on the edge okay so i can go from here and bring it down and you'll notice that my index finger is pinching this top corner and i got a pretty solid grip on this double now i can pick up the cards the two cards as one on the edge with my right hand, give them enough space for gravity to take over and it'll cause these two cards to rotate and land back on the deck. The, the key is to land them square so it looks like the, the ace goes straight onto the two. If they land off kilter, it'll look weird, okay? So it's a bit of a knack, but when you get it down, it can look pretty good, like this. That's the easy version. Now let's go into version two. Again, begin with the same setup, two face up, ace on top, three sort of floating. Now this time you'll turn over that single three, again displaying it as one card whilst maintaining or retrieving a single card pinky break. Place that three on top, make sure it's square. And now this time I'm gonna to turn to the side, I'm gonna place my middle finger into the break, my index finger pad on the side here, and my thumb goes on top. And you'll see my middle finger sort of kicks over the edge just a little bit, again, allowing to keep these pair, pair of cards square. And what's gonna happen is I'm gonna snap my hand forward like this. And because of the positioning, it gives you this really fast instant snap that really looks like the pip is coming off of the card, right? Again here, I'm gonna reposition, but not 
in terms of placing it on the deck, I'm going to reposition it, squaring the card all around, off of the deck. Okay, so I snap this double forward, making sure not to spread it. And now I'm going to re-grip this card with three fingers, my left hand thumb, my middle finger and my index finger. Thumb on the, on the long side, middle finger on the other long side, and index finger on the top. And that squares it. And as I do this, I kick it off to the side. It's kind of like a Gary Roulet move. All right. So speed, I go snap and reposition. Now, from this point of view, you can just drop it on top, just like earlier. Or if any of you know the Hiroki Sakai duck change move, then it's the perfect positioning to get straight into that. So I'm not going to teach it. You can go and learn it from his Nursery Rhymes Volume 3. Uh, the, 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 the complete overview of this is that I grip the cards at the corners, the two cards at the corner, and there's a certain pressure you can apply while the card is curved that will cause it to shoot forward and rotate, okay? But it's not my move to teach. You can go off and find that any way you like, um, specifically in his Nerdy Rhymes Volume 3. But this is how it looks. I just apply pressure and it'll shoot forward. Now, every now and then you get lucky and as it shoots forward through the air, one card will, the bottom card will dislodge and it'll stick flush to the deck as one card shoots forward. And that's just a luck thing. You can't really get that every time, but it looks great. And if not, you can just get it to land flush or try your best to get it to land flush. Let's do this again. One, two, three. And it looks absolutely clean as a whistle. Now let's go on to my preferred, more visual, slow motion visual. One final time you begin in the same setup, three of diamonds loose, an ace and a face down two on top. From here, you can either steal the pip off like this, or as we learned in the easy version, like that, whichever suits you. But now you're gonna create this optical illusion that it looks like this ace gets slowly absorbed and like a vacuum sucked onto the two of diamonds. Now, this is one of those moves that only works if you sort of believe it. It's kind of like one of those audible illusions or visual illusions where you can see a train move in direct two directions. As magicians, we can't see this illusion, but lay people can. So here's what's going to happen. It looks like I take that ace and I squeeze it onto the three. And it may look very simple because essentially what I'm doing is taking the ace from the squared position with a double, three on the, as a double on the back, and I'm laying it down flat on the deck. It's very easy, but actually what you need to focus on is your timing and positions, and it'll really create this incredible illusion. So however you've stolen the pip, reposition into this three finger grip we learned in version two face the audience head on i'm going to pick up the double now at the corners in this same corner grip to square everything and i'm going to raise my hand up and now you'll notice i've got these two cards essentially facing forward like this right towards the audience i don't i don't want one like this or one like that i want them facing head on towards the audience and what's going to happen is i'm going to slowly bring my hand down and as I do, the cards are gonna slowly turn towards each other. And what's gonna happen is this ace, this squared up double is gonna hit this card on the top card of the deck. And it's gonna bend just slightly, not a lot, but just bend. And it's gonna look like this ace presses into the exact position of where the three is gonna be. So this diamond is gonna to go to right where the three's diamond is. And I do this slow for a moment. And the very last minute, I'm gonna snap it out of my fingers like this. Okay, so my finger's gonna snap that double down and my thumb is gonna apply a bit of pressure and it's gonna look like it pings into existence. It's very kind of hard to do slow, but from here I go, and you'll notice as well, I don't just start here. I, I believe it, I, I, I act it, like it's really gonna be absorbed into the car. I go, and I even like make this sound like, so I go here and I go one, two, and the, and the last thing you'll notice is that as I merge these two cards together, the final snap, I tilt this hand down a lot. And and it adds this little bit of extra visual convincing that, that, that this card is on, has now been fused together with the two. So I go watch one, two, just like that. And it looks like that ace of diamonds has been absorbed and becomes a three of diamonds. Now from here, you can do a uh, sort of undercover sort of switch if you want to clean up to spread. So that's like a Marlowe move where 
in, in short, you can push over and steal this two under the three to turn it over, but that's all for another day. So that's it, three different variations for all skill levels, ED, easy, medium, and hard. If you've been following me on Instagram for the past few years, decade, even you'll have seen me perform these multiple times. This is the very first time I'm teaching all three in any place whatsoever. So remember, if you'd like to win the exact deck of cards, <laughs> that I use in today's video, then all you need to do is make sure you hit that subscribe button and try your best to please help me get over that 100,000 subscriber mark. And to all of my Patreon subscribers, this brand new visual slow motion color changing gimmick is available for you all to learn right now. If you're not a subscriber, head over to patreon.com forward slash Lloyd B. Until next time, folks, I've been Lloyd and I'll see you all very, very soon. Peace.